The Zarash in Persia campaign continues, but this time, thanks to the newly introduced Persian mission tree in the Kings of Kings DLC, the control of the Persian rug and fabrics industry have made silk worth more than gold, making provinces like this not only produce 20.60 ducats in production, but also make 16 ducats a month in trade, making us the richest nation in the game. In the last video, we started as the nation of Ajam, quickly uniting our nearby lands and after clicking a couple Timurid missions, formed Persia. We used the new Persian mission tree to become Zarashan and formed the Zarashan version of Persia, Iran Shahir, which has unique government interactions such as plus one dice roll on own territory. We were attacked by our neighbors in the south, the Rasids, and quickly defeated them, then prepared our own offensive war on the player on Georgia for the great project Baku Ashtag which gives plus 10 discipline at max level. After many years of fighting, we defeated him and then popped a mission that gave us control over the Persian rug trade, boosting the value of silk temporarily and giving us a huge boost in income. We then were attacked once again by the Rasids, now the Empire of Arabia. However, our quality was now insane and we defeated them once again. Our next target after that was the player of Transoxiana, where we got control of another Zoroastrian holy site in Kiva. That leads us to this video now, where we have the challenge of not getting coalitioned by the players we just defeated. Will our diplomacy get us out of this situation, or were we going to be forced to fight alone on multiple fronts? Figure out in this video, the final part of this two-part video series where I play Iran Shahir, the overpowered Zoroastrian Persia. Start this video by completing more missions, specifically the Caucasian Conquest, which gives us a unique event. Sponsor them, gives 25 years of manpower recovery speed. Production in Isfahan area, yeah, let them. And this is bugged. This is, what is this? Culture will not take slot until demoted, culture will not. Uh, okay. I didn't mention this in the last video, but in this mod that we're playing, Persia is actually slightly nerfed. We don't get Kizbash. That's my nerf. This nation's OP, dude. It deserves nerf. I I now realize why it was nerfed, and I think it was a good call. Yeah, it would be good to see like one video. Oh my God, look how OP they made Persia and multi. I mean Persia and multiplayer, but it's too OP, dude. It, even just getting this back is pretty OP, dude. Ten discipline. Like we were able to go quantity ideas while still having higher quality. More troops and higher quanti quality. That's kind of insane. And this is without the dev cost bonus too. <laughs> I think that's fine that that's removed too. Because Persia doesn't have access to this. No, this. Like I have this going off cooldown. And then we also have the terrain. Like uh, the terrain doesn't matter. Great works of Iran. We went from 150 eco to 740 in one session, dude. What the heck? It's gonna go down though. It's gonna go down to like 600. It was now time to do diplomacy with our previous enemy of Transoxiana. As mentioned before, it was really important right now that we don't get stuck fighting on multiple fronts. Luckily for us, Transoxiana had a new enemy in the Indian subcontinent. Oh, I just have that on uh, the Chan. Okay, uh, let me cut real quick. I'm sorry. This dead Chan is OP, dude. He's owning? No, he has like eight times more troops than I do. The nation of Vijangar in the south of India had converted to Shia Islam and formed the nation of Deccan and had become quite a menacing power in the south of India. And with our old enemy, Transoxiana, focused on fighting this Deccan force and Arabia still recovering from our last war, we could use this time to continue our scaling. All right, time to build universities everywhere, oh, chat. Second, the house, uh, houses of knowledge. What the heck, that's so many things. Diplomacy was done with Transoxiana. I would take two provinces from him in order to make nicer borders, and I would help him in his next war against the Can because he lost in the first war against them. 
He also made a border agreement with the Byzantines, giving the most of Anatolia to him, while we continued our expansion in the rest of Georgia. Because we got those two provinces from Transoxiana, we now had access to a special decision, rekindle the fires. This mission gave an additional 20% manpower in True Faith provinces permanently, bringing our max manpower to 700,000. Around this time, Silk went back to its normal value, bringing our income from 950 to 715 per month. Minus 250 income. We have more chests for sure. Do you know I stream every day except Fridays on my Twitch channel? Twitch.tv slash AbsoHabibi. I'm streaming EU4 multiplayer almost every single day and a variety of other games when I'm not playing EU4. I have an Ambinar MP game starting this Monday, a Brandenburg MP starting this Tuesday, a Muscovy campaign that's in its second session on Wednesdays, a really tough game where I'm playing as Hungary on Thursdays, and on Sundays, I have a very special 60-player roleplay game featuring Tommy K as the Iberia Bros. I'll be playing Spain, and Tommy K will be playing Portugal. All of my EU4 MPs start at the same time, which is 10 a.m. PST, 1 p.m. EST, and 7 p.m. CET. For variety, I'm playing Company of Heroes 2, Warno, Crusader Kings 3, and Age of Empires 2 on my stream. Of course, this schedule is based off of when this video is released. And if you want to see an updated schedule, you can see it on my Discord in the news channel and on my Twitch channel on the channel trailer. Updated every single Sunday from now on. And with that, let's get back into this Persia campaign. Deccan attacked Transoxiana once again, and we honored our defensive alliance and joined the war against him. This Deccan guy... He's going down. As I was mobilizing my troops to the border, a battle immediately broke out in the mountain province of Kalat. Khan is so powerful, actually. Strongest guy I've fought so far. The battles we fought were some of the bloodiest of this entire campaign, with sometimes even 10,000 damage ticks being dealt by either me or the Khan, as he also had pretty high unit quality. Alone, Transoxiana stood no chance against this Deccan. However, with both of our forces combined, we continued our offensive into Gujarati lands. The diplomatic tide had begun to switch to Deccan's favor. Both Bengal and Arabia joined on his side, and with no victory in sight, Transoxiana was forced to unconditionally surrender. diplomatic position with Transoxiana had to be rethought. As it stood, any time we helped Transoxiana against Deccan, we were going to be caught in a two-front war against Arabia and Deccan. And not only that, Bengal was on the side of Deccan. A new diplomatic strategy was discussed and formed in the court of the Shah, and a diplomat was sent to the Sultan of Deccan. The Shah of Aran Shahir proposes that they end their defensive alliance with Transoxiana. If you end your defensive alliance with the Empire of Arabia, do you accept? Okay. We would now focus our efforts in defeating the menace in the south, Arabia. With trade ideas now complete, we broke a thousand ducats of monthly income, becoming the economic hegemon of the world. Through our mission tree, we were able to get access to another estate, the Gilman. This estate had a privilege that gave us an additional 10% manpower and accepted in primary culture, and a scaling infantry combat ability based off of the influence of the Gilman. Additionally, there is also a 10% flat infantry combat ability in this estate. I did not want Arabia to be prepared for our next war against him, so I broke our truce and we begun our invasion into the Arabian desert. However, Arabia was not alone and they called in the Empire of Mali to join on his side. With all the player Iberian nations dead and Ethiopia no longer played by a player, 
there was no one to potentially ally. We had to win this war, one versus two. Arabia and Mali took quite a while to mobilize their troops. And after getting a very lucky siege at 7%, the first battle took place in the province of Medina. Stop reinforcements from reaching Medina, we started battles on multiple fronts, winning all three battles. Taking advantage of our enemy's armies in routing, it was time to siege the North Fort in Ma'an, salting the breached walls and getting another fort into our occupation. Our next move was to cross the Sinai Desert and go towards Cairo. While sieging Cairo, the Mali army went to siege Medina, starting the second battle of Medina. Once again, victory was achieved. No cannons in the back row! Despite being outnumbered by almost 200,000 troops, we were doing more casualties and we were going to win this war. All while taking no debt and Arabia close to bankruptcy. We were able to expand into the Nile Delta and more into the Arabian Desert. But we weren't done there. As long as Arabia survived, they would constantly be a thorn in our side. So we continued our expansion into them whenever our truce enabled us to do so. All our GovCap issues are resolved. I actually even remove this. Remove this. Remove this. We completed more missions in our tree. We were still the richest nation in the game by far. And the question became, who can challenge the great Aran Shahir? This Dakan is no joke. We once again entered another stage of build up and scaling. We were able to develop our lands for relatively cheap since all of our provinces had universities, literally every single one of them, and almost all of them had manufactories. How did we also have a lot of soldiers' households too? Well, that's where expanded infrastructure came into play. We also upgraded all of our great projects, such as the Azhar University and the Pyramids. But there was an enemy who was also scaling and prepared and poised to attack us. Oh, uh, like let's turn it up chat. Let's fight. We had reached the point of the game where we had over 1 million troops and over 2 million max manpower. Might seem overpowered, but Deccan was also over a million max troops and microing over a million men is extremely hard, especially when the game is quite laggy since it was late in the game. Make things worse, we were fighting in one of my least favorite regions in EU4 to fight in, the area of Baluchistan. Not only is there very little opportunity to make plays here, there also is a huge amount of time to go between provinces. If the province is scorched, it can sometimes take an entire month just to move from one province to another. And despite having more troops than they can, these province reinforcement times led to me losing when I shouldn't have lost. Since Deccan had the war goal for quite some time, he was able to stab hit us and get victory in this war, removing our economic hegemon. Hunt, the player playing Deccan, is no joke. We needed to prepare for our next war 
against Deccan. And in order to do that, we were going up to 2 million troops. At this point, I needed a co-op just like how they do on Big Nations in Hearts of Iron 4 multiplayer. Too bad co-ops in EU4 multiplayer cause desync issues. It's our turn to strike Deccan. Once again, taking a battle on the mountain province of Kalat, where we overwhelmed the Deccan forces sheerly by our numbers. We made it past the tunnels of Baluchistan and we're now entering the flat terrain of Gujarat. Even though we outnumbered Deccan, it was quite hard to get all of our troops in battle without severely overstacking. A victory led to another victory, and we continued our offensive. After every battle, we made sure to spread out our troops in order to not get too much attrition. We even took Tech 23 ahead of time, getting new infantry and cavalry units. Deccan smartly moved behind his fort line until he could take the tech as well. We began to stab hit Deccan, leading to us gaining back our claims as well as a little bit more land. Yes, victory! We're reaching the stage of EU4 where every single war was turning into the same casualties as World War I. What's next for Iran Shahir? How about invading the Roman Empire for Constantinople? I was getting tired of microing 2 million troops, so how about we just put all of our troops into one big stack? And since the game was getting really laggy and the Byzantium player did not want to fight this war, he conceded defeat and Iran Shahir was able to do what our ancestors dreamed of doing. And we controlled the city of world's desire, Constantinople. At this point, I feel like getting Constantinople is every campaign's goal. But imagine a bustling metropolis Constantinople, controlled by Iran Shahir. Thank you so much for watching this campaign and series. My community and mod team are actively trying to solve the late game lag issue in EU4 by optimizing our mods and trying to reduce the amount of manpower and troops that nations have post 1600. Hopefully we'll be able to do it, that way our campaigns can actually reach 1700 or you know, maybe even 1800. Anyways, make sure to check out my live stream, links in the comment in the description, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you my patrons, Mason Andruska, Chogus, RVR, Gigachad, Zorovia, Fabulous Nail, Hassium, Tonix, Will, Hardbam, Beyond, Djex, Kolkarp, Johan Asklund, Deshaun Moore, Trevor Kosman, Joss Zavoyad, Diane Mason. Thank you so much guys, and if I butchered your name, well, I'm really bad at pronouncing stuff. Isn't that obvious by now? But hey, if you want to support this channel and you want to get some super cool benefits like getting my save files and choosing what campaigns I play in my EU4 multiplayers, join my patron now in the link in the description.